Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. If you've got a reasonably modern desktop PC, upgrading your gaming experience is no big deal. Take out your old graphics card, slot in a new one, and shazam! Your games go from blurry slideshow to smooth and crispy, like a Pringle. But let's say that you enjoy portability not only in your potato products, but also in your computing ones. So, you've ditched your desktop for a do-it-all laptop, and you're wondering how to upgrade the graphics card on that, when you realize, <laughs> Oh wait, you can't, because assuming that it has a discrete GPU at all, the chips inside are soldered on. So wait then, what? You just have to buy a new laptop with the graphics you want? Or go back to a bulky desktop? Actually, do people even read the title? No, you don't. As long as your current notebook has a Thunderbolt 3 port, you may be able to use an external GPU enclosure. These devices look a little bit like a small form factor PC, but they are built solely to contain a desktop graphics card. Inside, you'll typically find a full-length PCI Express slot, power cables, at least one case fan to help keep it cool, and a power supply, either on the inside or on the outside. Nicer enclosures also feature other creature comforts, like USB and Ethernet ports that connect to your PC through Thunderbolt, internal drive mounts for your game library, or even RGB lighting, which may or may not be welcome. But back to the meat and potatoes of this topic. The reason these external enclosures are suddenly popping up for a product that was thought of as exclusively for internal desktop use not too long ago is because the Thunderbolt 3 controller in your computer can interface with your system's PCI Express bus at very high speeds. Though, that isn't to say that external GPU enclosures offer the same performance as a graphics card plugged directly into a motherboard, or even a desktop-grade graphics chip that has been incorporated directly into your laptop's mainboard, a recent trend among notebook makers. The Thunderbolt 3.0 connection is active. This means that it has internal logic that processes the signals that pass through it, and it only supports up to four PCI Express 3.0 lanes, rather than 16. So you could easily see around a 20 or 25% reduction in frame rates compared to an otherwise similar desktop, potentially even more, depending on your exact hardware configuration and the games you're trying to play. And if you want to play on your laptop's internal monitor with your external GPU, that GPU will be competing with the display data being looped back to your system, leading to yet another significant performance hit. Topping it all off, these enclosures tend to be expensive, starting at around 300 US dollars when we shot this episode, and going up to over 500 for premium ones. It should be noted, however, that the Alienware graphics amplifier is a bit of an exception here, but it uses a proprietary PCI Express connection that can only be found on Alienware branded laptops. So then, are external GPU enclosures just a waste of money for suckers? Well, no. They can be a compelling option if you have an existing non-gaming laptop or one with a weaker GPU and a Thunderbolt 3 port. And they can even be useful for non-gaming tasks, adding GPU acceleration to productivity suites like Adobe Creative Cloud, or even for plugging in non-graphics expansion cards, like audio interfaces, uh, NVMe SSDs, high-speed network cards, etc. And helping matters, some of the smallest and lightest enclosures are actually being sold with graphics cards included now at a net discount, helping to offset the high cost a bit. Now there are still a few gotchas to watch out for. You'll need to make sure that your laptop's Thunderbolt 3 port uses four lanes rather than two, and it's preferred that they come directly off the CPU rather than through the chipset. The latter can lead to bottlenecks. But if your hardware setup looks good, a laptop plus eGPU might make getting to and from your next LAN party a little bit easier. Unless you like to bench press full tower PCs in your spare time. Mm. Check out Ting, the mobile carrier that's focused on customer service and satisfaction. When you call Ting, you do not speak to a robot, you get put through directly to a person, and you don't pay a huge premium for the privilege. With Ting, you pay 
only for the airtime that you use with the average Ting bill coming in at only 23 bucks a month per device. So you can find out if you'll save on Ting by going to techwiki.ting.com. We're going to have that linked below and trying out their savings calculator. You spit in your last few bills and it tells you how much you'll save on Ting. Then, if you're stuck in a contract and you switch to Ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee up to 75 bucks and they have lower mobile data rates than ever at just $10 per gig beyond the first gig. So head down to that link, techwiki.ting.com, and when you sign up, you'll get 25 bucks in service credit or towards a new device. So thanks guys for watching. If you dislike this video, you can hit that button, but otherwise hit like, check out our other channels, leave a comment with video suggestions, and subscribe! Woo!